This is an introduction to SharePoint 2016. SharePoint 2016 is created by Microsoft as a browser-based collaboration platform to give people with no computer programming skills the ability to build sophisticated websites to be used by their coworkers and colleagues. SharePoint websites consist of three main elements. Pages, of which the home page is created for you automatically when the site is built, and user-built pages that are easy to design and add elements to. Lists, which can either be custom lists, where you get to decide what columns of information to gather from your team members and colleagues, or predefined lists, which Microsoft calls apps. There are many of these predefined apps included with SharePoint, like task lists, calendars, and announcements. A special kind of list that contains files of any type, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDFs, whatever, those kinds of lists are called libraries. But all of these work in the same way. They're simply lists, columns of information, where you and the fellow members of your SharePoint site add data, filling in rows into the lists. The third element that SharePoint sites can consist of are subsites. These are sites that live under the parent site and can appear to be their own complete standalone sites. They're simply subsites of a parent site for the sake of keeping organized the many SharePoint sites that an organization might want to create. Let's take a look at these three elements in a real SharePoint site. Just as any two websites can look different from each other, any two SharePoint websites can look different from each other as well. But there are templates on which each SharePoint site is based. And here's an example of a SharePoint site that was based on what's probably the most commonly used template called the Team Site Template. What you're seeing here is the home page. This page is built automatically when the site is first created. You can almost always tell you're on a page because the ribbon here will include a tab called Page, as well as one called Browse. The Page tab, when you click it, would let you, if you have permissions, go about editing the design of that page or doing a number of other things to that page. To make the ribbon go away, click Browse. The ribbon is one of the common elements that you'll see throughout SharePoint sites. Another common element that you'll see throughout SharePoint sites is the Quick Launch Bar. That's this area down here on the left hand side. It provides links to the favorite places within the SharePoint site. It's context aware so its offerings may change as you navigate around a site. The home link will always get you back to the home page of the site as will this graphic here which can be customized by the way and you see the name given to the SharePoint site here. That's also a sure way of getting back to the home page of the site. Which leads me to another common element that you'll see in most SharePoint sites and that is called the top navigation bar. That's a navigation bar that runs horizontally across the top of the page that's not context sensitive. That is, its choices never change as you navigate around within a site. The top navigation bar is a good place to put links to major areas of the site or even to other sites like subsites. Now I'll navigate into one of the lists. Using the quick launch bar, clicking announcements, which is a list that I've created that will allow the members of this site to create announcements or read announcements created by their co-members. The announcements list appears and you can see that I've created one announcement already, an entry in the list. You might notice that there's no ribbon in this list, although there is a toolbar of sorts. That's because there are at present two experiences, as Microsoft calls them, the new experience and the classic experience. If I switch to the classic SharePoint experience, the look and feel of the list changes and we get our ribbon back. In a list, one of the tabs of the ribbon will be called List. Again, clicking Browse will cause the ribbon to get out of the way so that you can see the title of the list and the top navigation bar again. So you'll always know you're in a list because of the List tab on the ribbon. Unless it's a special kind of a list like a library. The Documents Library is one that's included with almost every SharePoint site. You don't have to create it manually. And you can see that there's a library tab on the ribbon. As I click into that tab, you'll see offerings on it that were very similar to the offerings on the announcements list that you saw a moment ago. Here's another interface element that you'll find commonly sprinkled throughout SharePoint sites. 
the ellipsis or three dots. Anytime you see those three dots, you can click on them to get options. Depending on where you are, the options will change. For example, if I go back to the announcements list, you'll see that my new announcement, the site is live, has an ellipsis next to it. Clicking the ellipsis lets me edit the item, delete the item, and so forth. The ellipsis looks a little bit different in the new experience. Watch as I exit out of the classic experience. You'll see that the ellipsis is turned upright. There, you see it here. The three dots are standing on top of each other. But it's the same idea. Click the three dots and you get options. One more interface element I want to show you, and that is breadcrumb navigation. As you wander about a SharePoint site, working with different features and settings, you might come across a situation where you have a navigation bar across the top, below the top navigation bar, that tells you where you are and what that item is related to or kind of where you came from. It's not necessarily a history per se, like the back button on your browser would take you back to the previous page in your history. But this breadcrumb style navigation says, I'm on the settings page right now pertaining to the announcements list. And it's not just informative, it's active. If you click on announcements, it will take you back to the list itself, away from the settings for that list and into the list itself. In this introduction to SharePoint 2016, you've learned to recognize breadcrumb navigation. You've learned that there are two ways to experience a SharePoint site, the new experience and the classic experience. And that in the classic experience, we get our traditional ribbon back. You've learned that you can use the ribbon to tell whether you're on a list or a page. You know that the quick launch bar is a bar of links down the left hand side of each page of a site that changes depending on where you are within that site. That there's a top navigation bar that does not change that you can fill with links to common or popular areas, different sites or different areas within the current site. But I think most importantly you've learned that SharePoint, when broken right down, is simply a way to create websites that consist of pages, lists or libraries, and subsites with the intent of bringing people together to collaborate on the information that they need to do their work successfully. Please watch the other SharePoint videos where we'll dive in more deeply to how to use all the wonderful features of SharePoint 2016.